Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flytech. Today I will show you how you can build these closed eyebrow windows for your Boeing home carpet. So what we have to come out with are two boxes that have to be built inside these two shapes here. But where can these planes be mounted on? It would be very difficult to mount them directly on this wooden structure or here uh, where we don't have any structure out here. And so my first step is to build a frame out of foam around this shape here to act as a support for the upcoming structure. I let the shape overlap the ceiling by about 3.5 cm and cut stripes of 5 by 4 cm. You may remember the small gap I've left here between the ceiling frame and the overhead frame. To have enough space if the overhead comes out wider than I'm expecting. That was no problem to come uh, nearer to the overhead frame uh, here with the ceiling coverage because it is uh, just wood and a little bit of paint and I can send it away if I need more space here. Uh, this construction later will be from uh, foam, glad clothes, filler and paint and if I will send this away it would be very difficult to repair it later. So I make sure that I leave all the space I can get to uh, have enough room for the overhead later. Double-sided tape will hold the pieces in place temporarily. This cutout was needed to leave out the mounting block of the front ceiling handle. I now have to build a foam stripe that connects the edge of these two stripes with the edge of these two stripes here. This beam doesn't go this way exactly. It is, um, I think, some centimeters off to the left here. And so I will have to cut a wider stripe of foam and make a diagonal insert in it to hide this beam here. I split the block into two parts to be able to make a cleaner cutout in the middle. Then I connected all pieces together with construction glue. So 
So the glue has dried overnight and I hope everything sticks together fine now. But before we can remove this for the first time, we'll have to add some more material. This lower edge here comes out a little bit more and builds a round shape in this corner here. And I hope we can bring this angle a little bit more to the middle of this post now. And we will add some material to this post that will meet this lower edge here. Now it's time to get this out for the first time. But this wouldn't work now. It sits too tight and wouldn't come out at any angle. So what we have to do now is to cut the foam wider so that the whole construction slides out more easily. I widened the cutouts a little bit to make the later installation more easy. Now I have to fit this block onto these two blocks here. Remember we want to make a connection from this angle to this angle here. So the block has to run a little bit diagonal, like so. Don't worry, we'll bring this all to shape later. Now it's only important that this end of the block fits into this edge here. Cutting this to shape is the real fun part of the project. The front edge of this stripe should be about 4 cm away from the side wall. So I will measure this distance, mark it here and then shorten the stripe with a straight line up to this edge here. When I built my first eyebrow window I had prepared these paper templates of the windows which match the measurements nearly exactly to the uh, original but uh, when i tried this out for the first time in this frame construction it doesn't fit anyway and it wouldn't have looked like uh, like i expected it to look uh, just wrong and the angles uh, looked wrong it was a mess so what we do instead is that we take a paper and transfer the shapes of these window openings to the papers and then scale them down a little bit so that we come out with a smaller copy of this frame opening and take this as a back wall.
this bottom part runs up in a small angle. And if you want to know the angle it has to take, then you insert the part in here, hold the back wall and the bottom wall um, in a 90 degree angle to each other and then tilt it until the back wall is parallel to the frame. And then you have the angle the bottom part has to take. I sanded down the front edge to build a smoother transition between the foam and the wood. The following parts needed all the same steps. Cutting them out with the help of a previous made paper template sending the front edge down and connecting them with glue. I filled all the gaps with construction glue for giving more strength to the whole construction. While I was gluing this back piece onto the box, it slipped away a little bit and this glue dries so fast that I couldn't correct it anymore and to don't let this box become bigger than necessary I will cut away these overhangs here. All inside edges were filled with construction glue to strengthen the connection and also build a little inside rounding. Then I prepared the glass clothes to save time later during the laminating process.
as you have seen, I've cut away the glass clothes, which uh, goes over the edge of this foam frame here. And this is because my goal is that this foam frame lays flat on the ceiling surface. And maybe you can see here when the acrylic one comes over the edge, it builds little mountains and uh, this edge wouldn't lay flat anymore on the surface. So I will sand it down and so I will come out with a sharp edge around the window. Now I want to explain which filling steps I will take during the flattening process here. First of all, I will use a mixture of A1 and Sixotro B to flatten all the transitions between the wooden structure and the glass clothes. And I will use the same mixture to flatten most of the structure caused by the brush here. Then I will use A1 with the ATP powder, make a thicker mixture and close these gaps between this middle post here and the structure transitions and model the transition to the frame a little bit more smooth, fill some of the bigger holes and giving the edges a bigger rounding. And at the end, I will uh, use the same mixture to go over the frame again and again and close last uh, cracks and small structures and sand it all the time after it dries until the whole frame uh, is flat again. The roundings can be easily done with the help of a silicon foam. Two days ago, one of my forming forms uh, disappeared and I couldn't find it until now. Do you want to know where it was? Here, sticking to some filler. When you are sanding this material, then don't use normal sandpaper when you have to sand so much of it. The sandpaper will get stuck with the dust and will be useless within minutes. I instead use this tanning cloth. There is a fence in it and so the dust can get through it. And I've reached better results with it than with any other power tool I've used so far to sand this here. I applied some coats of spray filler to close small cracks and a coat of primer. I want to show you the new problem that appeared when I sent this window in for the first time. I will show you this on the windows on the right side because the window you see in the video is just in the painting room. When I installed this for the first time, I saw that it didn't fit anymore 
as it did when I constructed it just from foam. You can see there is a gap surrounding it now. And I think this comes from the filling material. This material tends to shrink when it starts drying. And in this case, the material is brought onto this front side here. And when it shrinks, it forces the construction to bend to the inside. And I think this causes a gap here. Anyway, now I can follow my old plan, which was uh, make this window removable and install it with strong magnets. With this gap, this is impossible. Now I have to install it permanently into the ceiling. And I think I will fill this gap with a lot of construction glue, but then I will have to make a um, smooth transition from the eyebrow windows to the ceiling surface. And this is the reason why I can't paint it now, because I have to paint it when it is installed. And I will also have to paint the material which builds a transition. So I will have to disassemble the whole roof here again and bring it to the painting room when this is installed correctly. The gap between this middle post here and the form of the eyebrow windows is a little bit too big and so I will add an extra piece of wood here for not needing so much construction glue in the middle. Now I will insert the eyebrow window and press it so that the glue will spread between uh, the gaps. And I will secure the window with this high-end eyebrow window securing jig. I will clamp it just under here. After the glue had dried, I could bring the parts to the painting room. I applied a coat of primer and some coats of paint. Now I have the same problem that I had when I painted the side walls. The masking tape didn't work as well as I hoped to. And I have some rests here of this gray paint. But I think I can work with this. I will overpaint these parts with the white color here. And then I will cover the whole thing again with a coat of clear varnish and then it is finished. And here they are finally in place. Guys, what can I say? That was definitely the most challenging part of the cockpit until now. It took me weeks and weeks to build these things, but they are looking so beautiful and the whole ceiling uh, becomes more realistic with these in it. So it was definitely worth it. 
So I will continue detailing the ceiling in my next video and I will inform you about the progress on my Instagram or Facebook account so you should follow me there. And if you haven't done already, then subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. So I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.